I'm Alison Lambton with the City of Greater Dandenong and welcome to this special mini-series crossover of Quick Arts and Creative Rise. Let's talk about stretcher frames. So what actually is a stretcher frame? We've probably seen them at a lot of shops. You can get them from expensive shops and very cheap shops. Uh, what actually is a stretcher frame? We've got a few examples here. It's basically the framework in which canvas or linen is stretched on. And the purpose of that is to then create on. And I won't just say painting because they are used for many different art disciplines and quite um, recently in the last few years, embroidery in, in um, being used on stretcher frames is becoming more and more popular, which is beautiful. So uh, have a look for embroidered artwork on stretcher frames. Um, you'll get some really lovely results. But onto our stretcher frames. They are comprised of four uh, bars. So these are called our bars. There is also another extension of a stretcher frame that's called a bar, and that is used on really, really large stretcher frames. It's where you'll actually need like a brace bra a bar between uh, these main side support bars. These side support bars, I'm just gonna call them bars, they come in a various um, sort of shapes and designs. They should, by rights, all come with this lovely 45 degree mitre joint cut, but there is a difference. If you have a look at this one, it's flat. So we'll, we'll end up gluing and just stapling those. So you can get stretcher bars with that mitre joint 45 degree angle cut, but they have this additional section of wood and these um, interlock with each other. It does make for a very firm and secure connection whereas you really do need to rely on the glue and the stapling for, this, um, for the security of this sort of flat mitre joint. Um, there's, look, there's advantages, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, Often you'll find that a price is a factor. The stretcher bars that have this additional wood are quite often a little bit more expensive, but they are really good in the sense of you don't actually have to then glue them. You can literally push them together and put a few staples at the back. Then when you want to reuse it, you can pull out those staples and just pull it apart. Not that you can't do that if you glue it, uh, but you do risk actually snapping these, these little additional slides. When you have got your stretcher bars with those slides, this is actually what that join will look like. You can see that these stretcher bars, it's already been constructed and it's got staples at the back. You'll end up getting this look, which doesn't matter because visually you won't see it because your canvas will be stretched over the top. But these stretcher bars, have that little extra slip. These stretcher bars do not, and they rely, as I said, solely on gluing and stapling, which for smaller pieces is really adequate. It's absolutely fine. Um, and these ones are slightly cheaper. What is similar with all of these stretcher bars is they all have a bit of a hint of a bead or a, a slight bevel. What that means, on the outer edge, See if I can do that. On the outer edge, it's slightly raised. So this outer edge of this stretcher bar is higher than this inside ledge. It actually bevels up a little bit. This kind of lip up here is called a bead and I'll tell you why we have that in a minute. Another example of that bead, this one's a lot more obvious. You can see this higher ridge on the outside of this stretcher bar. Another more extreme one, you can see this outer edge a lot higher. It's really being carved and beveled down as it gets to the center of this stretcher bar. The reason your stretcher bars have that bead, that higher edge on the outside, is it keeps your canvas, whether it's the linen or hemp or whatever the actual material is, it keeps your canvas off that actual stretcher bar. What you don't want is a stretcher bar that is completely flat because otherwise your linen and your canvas will sit flat onto it and when you are painting, you will see the actual wood frame ridge. So always make sure, it doesn't matter if you get a stretcher bar that has just the flat 
mitre joint or it has the extra internal slip of the mitre joint, regardless of that, you want to make sure the outer edge of your stretcher bar is actually raised. It has to have some kind of carved or be beveled bead on this outer side. Now how to put this together. I've got some really simple wood glue here. It is kind of heavy duty glue, so it's, um, it, it's not just sort of like a little thing that I'm gonna have in my kid's craft box. It is good quality uh, wood glue. And I have got myself a staple gun. Um, normally I would use an electric staple gun, but you can actually get these cheaper ones from hardware shops. It can take a little bit of hand effort, but they work just as well. Shake up the glue and just put a small slither over one side. Kind of give it a bit of a kiss with the other side, just to get that glue on both sides. Obviously it's not fast setting, so you don't have to worry that it's you know, sitting apart for the moment. And my suggestion would be the first thing you do with a stretcher bar that does not have those internal inserts, you glue it, you hold it together, just wipe the excess off, feel that pointed edge, feel that pointed edge because your finger will be able to tell whether they're actually really, really even. Like I said, take your time with this, it's not going to dry straight away. So I'm just, I'm just bracing it with my hand. And nothing's wrong with having a bit of a kit set up at home where you've actually got um, one of those sort of gorilla grips that, that can sort of hold those pieces in place. Or if you've got someone at home with you that can maybe give you a, a set of their hands to help hold. I'm going to put a nail at the very front of my stretcher bar, but I wanna make sure it doesn't get the risk of being seen through my canvas. So I'm gonna place it towards the inside. I'm not gonna place it towards the outside where the, that beveled edge is, just for risk it may end up being seen through the canvas. So we wanna make sure that our staple is positioned evenly over the join. Hold down and fire in. You can see it's crossed over the join. It's also quite flat. If by chance the, the staple doesn't go all the way in, feel free to grab a hammer and just gently tap, or even like a plastic um, mallet will work as well, just to tap that in flat. But this is why we have that staple at the front, right down towards this centre, because the canvas linen will actually sit above that. Now, I would suggest you go ahead and do the same for the, the other three sides. So once you've gone and done the other three sides, very gently flip it over, remembering you, the glue won't have set yet and you've only got one staple in the front. Push the back edges in and then go ahead and add two to three more staples around each of your mitre joint. I recommend one towards the, the uh, inner section and then one towards the centre. Still avoid stapling too far out to the edge just because obviously it's a narrower area and you don't want it to splinter through your stretcher canvas. All four mitre joints are done, all four corners are done. We have it glued, we have it stapled. It's now very sturdy. Again, I'm gonna um, step back into what I said at the very start. If this was a very large stretcher frame, you would need to purchase and glue and staple a support bar. Whether it's one that comes across the horizontal back, however that may look, if it's really large, you actually may need a complete cross section at the back of your stretcher frame. Stretcher frames have been used 
since about the 17th century. Canvas was used a lot earlier, but it wasn't put on stretcher frames until about that 17th, 18th century period. So they have been around for a very long time. They've been like a tried and tested design. Highly recommend having a look at shops, having a look online, because you can get um, access to such a variety of lengths. And as I said, prices, um, be aware of that bead on the outside. One thing I really do wanna mention also, when it comes to stretcher frames, they often come in pairs, pairs of the matching size. So an example of this one, I bought the two long lengths as a matching pair, and then I just chose what other length I wanted and bought these two uh, smaller ones as a matching pair. But I could have bought the longer sides and then maybe have bought a matching pair of this length um, of a stretcher bar. So you actually get that flexibility where you can choose how big you want the tops, the bottoms, the edges of your stretcher frame. And one of the huge bonuses of knowing how to put together your own stretcher frame is it means that you can pull it apart and change out the edges. So as long as you have the same um, sort of manufactured design, I could swap this out, pull out the staples. I could just gently knock apart where that glue is holding it, give it a bit of a sand and a clean up, and then I could actually get some extra like shorter ones or longer ones, as long as it's actually got the same, um, the same thickness of the wood and it's got the same bead. I wouldn't be able to successfully swap it out with this design, but I do have the flexibility of buying extra lengths of this swapping out the shape and design and I can do that all from my own home and my studio meaning that when I want to do a different size painting I don't actually have to buy something new every single time they're reusable thank you so much for watching I hope that you are now feeling a lot more confident to go into your own home studio and put together your own stretcher frame happy arting